Welcome to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. We have with us today an amazing participant who's been with us in several episodes before. And today he very sportingly decided to be the only guest on our show, Darwin Reyna. Darwin, I'm going to have you remind our viewers a little more about yourself before I tell them sure. a little more about the program. Sure. How many episodes have you been with us? A lot. At already. least 12, 15? More, I think. More than that? Yeah. It's wonderful. How did Good you feel? Experience. Good I experience. Good experience. Yeah. I At miss every time. You know, I miss when we're in, in the weekends, when we're not right. doing it. I miss it, you know. You I know really what you do. can do every time yes. you're home? You should use this postcard. For our viewers at home, just know that you have a lot of support. What Darwin does, he takes his postcard with him. He has a fridge magnet with the same 48 plus simple uh, ailment specific stretches. 48 stretches and this postcard is color coded so you have standing postures in green seated in red you have the blue in uh, prone and the supine postures are in purple so Darwin now knows the whole process right Darwin so yeah. do you actually use this card do you put it on your fridge yeah, or something? I got this one <laughs> you have the fridge magnet for the fridge so we have a fridge magnet as well with the same posture so tell us so what do you do do you do Standing postures one day, or do you do a few Most stretches? Most of the time, um, probably you can correct me, but I do, for example, green, and I stop until there. Good. Is that fine, too? That's fine. You do standing postures exactly. one day. Okay. And then I go into the next color. Very nice. Okay. So how long, how much time do you, are you able to spend stretching a day? Maybe five, ten minutes at least, yeah. every now and then? That's all you need, really. Viewers, please understand that all you have to do is whenever your body feels a little tight, whenever your mind is feeling restless, all you need to do is stretch a little bit. Stretch and let every stretch take you deeper and deeper into the posture. When your body stretches, you release those feel-good juices called endorphins. Yep. That's what makes you feel good. That's how you, what you're doing is you're in yoga stretches, what we are really doing is stretching the tendons. The tendons are the connective tissue between the bone and the muscle. So when you're stretching the connective tissue, you're releasing the endorphins, all those feel-good juices. So yes, all you need is a five-minute recharge, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Every day, and it's good. It's great because this is different than doing gym, you know? Right. Because you, you feel after you finish stretching, you feel better. In yes. the gym, you feel tired. You feel tired, exactly. So, but with it, you feel better, like energetic again. You feel body, totally you know? it's recharged. True. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's totally true. I really. And one of the things when sometimes I get stressed, I like to do the the balance. Right. <laughs> I really do. You know do why? A lot. You like them because you're comfortable in them. Yeah. You're good in balanced postures, right? Yeah. That's what happens, Darwin. When you're very comfortable in a posture, it becomes your favorite posture. That's really how nature works, yeah. right? You enjoy doing a posture because you're good at it. Challenge yourself next time. Get into postures that you find are a challenge for you and work on those also. Yeah, you're going to do that. Yeah. But for example, if I do the whole uh, the whole exercise, Sequence? gonna, sequences, how long is going to take me? Well, for me, personally, because I know, and this is where, it's where I'm glad you asked that question, because this is important for our viewers also to know. Once you know what's coming next, mm -hmm. what, once you know the postures that are coming, it's, it flows one after yeah. the other. And for me, I can do it very comfortably in 20 minutes, or I can do a quick you know, like a express, yeah. an express workout in 12 minutes. Right. For me, anything faster than 12, I don't get a real workout. But anything, maybe around 20 minutes, I get a really deep workout because I know what postures are coming next. Once you know what comes next, exactly. that's 90% of your stress level goes down because you know what's, it's like going on the street, you're driving on the freeway, and if you don't know which exit to take, 
then your stress level goes up, yeah. right? The moment right. you know where to exit, you're very calm, you're driving comfortably. As soon as you know what's coming next, you're comfortable. So yes, to answer your question, you can do this in 20 minutes once you know what's coming. Or just keep this in front of you and you can just follow that. Yeah. So you want to try the whole thing one day? Oh yes, absolutely. You think you want to try? You think it's okay if I, uh, what I've been doing, like the, the colors, one day? It's fine, you yeah. can do standing seat, that's Is that fine. Okay? Oh yeah, that's perfectly okay because then you have um, a natural flow. Mm -hmm. So that's okay, you could do that. Okay. You could also do knee benders one day, you could do back bends one day. Okay. You like balance, you could do yeah. balance postures. It's perfectly okay because what you're doing is you're making the best use of the time you have with you, right? Right. right. So let's remind our viewers, Yoga Express airs Monday through Friday on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35. That's Monday through Friday at 1.30 Eastern Time, New York Time. Now, if you're, not, if you're not in New York and you don't receive our channel, you could go to Manhattan Neighborhood Network website, www.mnn.org, and go to MNN3, type in Yoga Express, Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S. -S. We also have a website by the same name, so it's yogaexpress.com, and we have a blog as well. For our viewers, we'd like to remind you, you're welcome also to send in suggestions. Besides coming here and stretching with us, if you do stretch with us, we will give you a copy of my third title, Yoga, Ex uh, Yoga Secrets, which has eight plus two ailment-specific cards inside. And we'll give you a postcard and the fridge magnet, plus a sun salutation poster. So we have a lot of support for you. But if you're just stretching at home by yourself, you could go to the website, get all the um, tips and techniques right there. But once you come here, you know how to move further from there. Uh, besides that, we, uh, Darwin and I are going to take you through some stretches today. Uh, are you okay with doing knee benders today? Oh, Let's yes. do the arthritis sequence. I'm so okay. before, <laughs> before we get into the stretches, we'd like to remind our viewers, the sequence that we offer you, the 48 plus, when we break it down to knee benders, for example, we're trying to target all postures. We are actually taking you in and out of postures where you bend and unbend the knees so that you can help build synovial fluid to help prevent arthritis. So arthritis of the knees, for example, occurs when the knee, knee joints, they hurt because the synovial fluid dries up. So when you bend and unbend, we are regenerating some of that fluid, helping lubricate the knees. So that's what we're gonna take you through today. Now, before we move on, we're gonna stand up in just a moment. Before we move on, I'd like to thank our director, Josiane Hurd. Josiane, thank you so much for directing our episodes. I think you've been there for quite some time with us. Thank you so much. And we'd also like to thank uh, Roberta Espinel. Banner, I got a question. Sure. Uh, what is the, the, the right age to start with yoga and the limit? Oh, the end, I... Uh, if oh, there is no... There is really, because yoga is about stretching. Yeah. So we always like to say, if you can move, you can stretch okay. from the time a child is able to move around if they can understand if they can comprehend instructions right. but if you notice children automatically go into positions like down dog mm -hmm. you'll see kids going upside down they don't even realize they're doing yoga okay. but if you want to formally instruct someone they need to understand instructions so let's say about three to four years old is great but there is no optimum age, there's no maximum nice. age. It depends on their mental makeup. Okay. Some people may never have done yoga. We had, Josie and had a like friend. Me. You've never done yoga before, never. but you're young, so your body can take it. Sometimes people, uh, we had one of Josie Ann's friends, she was 92. She has never done yoga, she had never done yoga before, wow. but she kept an open mind. She mm -hmm. was willing to stretch with us. You have an open mind, so even though you've never done yoga, you're willing to try. Yeah. That's important. Okay. Yoga is not about flexing the body or sitting in, in a lotus position, it's going not about age. Putting the. It's not about age, it's not about your fitness level. It's making the most of what you have nice. and coming to terms with what you don't. If you feel you're not ready for a certain posture today, you let it go and move on to the next right. one. So we just go deeper and deeper every day. Let's stand up. We'll take our viewers through some knee benders. Rich, thanks for being there for us as well. We appreciate that you're there to give us uh, support. We're going to go through about 10 to 12 postures. I, I believe we have about 18 minutes. Bring your feet out about four to six inches apart. Keep the insides of your feet parallel to each other. So you want to make sure that your heels are not close, so you want to keep them parallel. Now, this is to make sure that your feet are directly below your hips. Utkat Asan. 
Inhale, bring the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing in. So you're gonna hold it right there. Now exhale, bend at the knees. Exhale and bend. You're sitting in an imaginary chair. Exhale. Now if you feel there's too much pressure on your knees in this posture, you may want to lean back or lean upright a little bit. If you can handle it, you can go forward. Now if you're young like Darwin, Darwin also works out of the gym. If your back is strong, feel free to lean forward, but just know that when you lean forward, there's more pressure on the knees. So, which, which is why I bring my knees out, but really you should try and keep your knees closer. Knees go in, inhale, let's come up. Utkat is thunderbolt, exhale and release. Let Darwin and I are gonna to turn to face the camera to our left. Bring your legs out about three feet apart. First, put your brakes on. Three konasan, three is three is three, cone is corner. Literally, three cone is three corners or triangle. Bring the right foot out so that the sole of the right foot is at a T with the inside of the left foot. Make sure your upper body faces the left side of the studio or the room where you're stretching. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Lean a little bit to your right, and then we're already in halfway into triangle. Exhale, dip your right hand in front of your right ankle. Left arm goes all the way up. Both palms face forward. Look up at the raised arm and hold. When we say hold, it's always hold your posture, not your breath. Keep breathing, keep exhaling. When a posture gets tough, the best thing you would be doing, the greatest favor you're doing your body is to keep exhaling. Hold it. Darwin, do you feel that stretch in the back yes. of your thighs, right? Yeah. <laughs> Feels wonderful. Inhale, let's come up. Viewers need to also know, you need to understand that our holding times are longer in the studios. You don't have to hold it as long as we do. Turn your right foot in, turn the left foot out. We're gonna face away from the cameras for just a second. I'm gonna bring my feet out just a little more so I can feel the stretch a little more. Now. Lean a little bit to your left, exhale, dip your left hand in front of your left ankle, right arm goes all the way up. And this side is more hard for me. This side is yeah. a little harder for you. That's an, I'm glad you brought that up, Darwin, and I'm, I'm so grateful that you actually reminded me because I need our viewers to understand that we all have our imbalances. One side is more flexible, one side is stronger, and that is very natural. That's true, huh? Wow. <laughs> Inhale, let's come up. Actually, this side is a little harder for me too. Turn your left foot in. Now, keep your arms where they are. Turn the right foot out. We're gonna take this posture one step further into another one called Veera Bhadra. Veera is brave, Bhadra is warrior. Veera Bhadra, brave warrior. Exhale, bend the right leg at the knee. Let's go deeper. Keep exhaling, dip your right hand in front of your right ankle. Left arm goes all the way up. Veera Bhadra Kona. Kona is corner, warrior, angle. Now let's take that even deeper. Take the left arm all the way overhead. Palm faces down. When your palm is outward, you're sending your energy out. You want to conserve your energy, so you want to keep your palm facing down. Now you should also feel a beautiful yeah. stretch in your obliques right. on the left side, right? Yes. And you're doing the right thing, darling. Keep exhaling. Inhale, let's come up. Straighten the right leg at the knee, turn your right foot in, turn the left foot out. And we're gonna look away from the camera again for a few moments. Exhale, bend the left leg at the knee. Keep exhaling. Dip your left arm in front of your left ankle. Take the right arm all the way up. Challenge yourself, take the right arm all the way overhead, palm faces down. Look at the tip of your fingers on the right hand and hold it. This time you'll feel a beautiful, delicious stretch in your obliques on the right side, as well as a whole abductor muscle, the outside of your upper right thigh. Inhale, let's come back. Turn your left foot in, exhale and release. Wiggle your feet a little closer. Did we say knee benders? We did the tricon, the triangle, without bending our knee. We were supposed to be focusing only on the knee benders. That's all right, we got an extra stretch. Yeah, <laughs> it was good, well, huh? It felt wonderful, yeah. didn't it? And you know what, the tricon, the triangle, where we went down without bending the knee, 
Even though it was not traditionally a knee bend, it was a good preparation for the next posture. So it's okay, we got an extra stretch. <laughs> we'll take our viewers through a posture called Vriksh. Vriksh is trees, literally Sanskrit name for tree. Turn your left knee out to the side. Lift your left heel off of the floor. Now remember, we're gonna attach the sole of the left foot to the inside of the upper right thigh, and then we'll do it on the other leg. But you don't have to go that high. You can take your left foot all the way up. If you're not comfortable or you're, not, you're fairly new to these uh, postures, you can bring your left toe, big toe, close to your right ankle and just rest it on the right ankle. When you're ready, when you're nice and confident and steady, you can keep going a little higher, maybe at your calf. Try to avoid your knee. You can try and bring it all the way up. This time, we're gonna attempt to take it all the way up. But if our foot slips, that's okay. The idea is to get some balance and to bend the knee. So the idea is to get something out of our stretches. Turn the left knee out. Inhale, look at a point that doesn't move. Vriksh or tree, place the right hand on the right hip. Transfer your weight to the right leg, inhale. Lift the left foot very gently. Hold on to the left ankle from the front. Attach the sole of your left foot to the inside of your upper right thigh. You can dig your left heel into the groin area so you get a nice grip on your foot. Sometimes your clothing may make it slip, make your foot slip. That's okay. Don't get discouraged. When you're ready, bring your palms in front of your chest. Now hold the posture, look at a point that doesn't move. If you want to take it a step further, take your arms all the way overhead. Now if you're very confident of yourself, I'm not always comfortable closing my eyes. So I'm not going to close my eyes. If you're very confident, bring your gaze a little closer. Exhale and release very gently, very slow controlled motion. Release the left foot, transfer your weight to the left leg, turn your right knee out, lift the right heel off of the floor. Now remember, you are still getting a knee bender when you keep your heel, right heel, at your left ankle. So the idea in this ep episode today is to bend and unbend your knees. Now, if you go further up, your knee bends a little more. Now, it's up to you how far you want to go to. You can also use a chair for this posture. It's a balanced posture. Inhale, left hand on left hip, Hold on to the right ankle. With your right hand, attach the sole of the right foot to the inside of your upper left thigh. Dig your right heel into your left groin and hold. Look at a point that doesn't move. When you're ready, place your palms in front of your chest. Lift your elbows up. Inhale, take your arms all the way overhead and hold. If you want to go further, feel free to close your eyes. I'm not quite there yet. I'm gonna just bring my gaze a little closer, very gently, release, slow controlled motion. Left hand on left hip, hold on to the right ankle, gently lower the right foot to the floor. Now when we bend, in, in fact, you know what Darwin, it just struck me, even when we go to the subway station, right, there are the escalators. Yeah. So we're walking up and down the escalators, I know a lot of people are always in a rush. They want to save time, they take the escalator, but just think of it this way. You can go up the escalator, but also start walking. So that's, you're bending and unbending your knees. So you can do these yeah. stretches on a daily basis too. That's true, yeah. So that way there's motion and there's movement. So you're moving, you're saving time, plus whenever you're tired, you can mm -hmm. always stop, but you're still moving, the escalator's moving. Right. So you know, instead of taking the stairs, you feel sometimes at Lexington Avenue, for example, they've got like 120 steps, right? Yeah. It's tough. All right, we'll take you through a posture called Natraj or Dancer's Pose. Transfer your weight to the right leg. Place your right hand on your right hip. Now I'm gonna have Darwin come forward. I'm gonna go back just a little bit so we don't hit each other. Transfer your weight to the right foot. Hold on to the left ankle from behind. Oh, it looks like we're not, there's not enough light in the back, okay. Very gently lift your left, raise your left heel from behind. Hold on to your left ankle. Now, you can hold on to your left ankle or go even higher, but I would stay at the ankle because you have a kind of a, you can flex your foot and then get a good grip. Now, when you're ready, look at a point that doesn't move. Inhale the right arm up. Very gently exhale, dip the torso and lift the left knee. 
Uh, you don't have to go too deep. In fact, I wouldn't recommend that you go very deep. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release. The idea in this posture is to feel the bending and unbending of the knee, right? Yeah. Plus, you should also feel a wonderful feel stretch here, in your yeah. quads. That's good. And you know what? I found something else. I found out something else about my body anyway. If I keep my knees close to each other, the stretch is deeper. You could bring the knee out. It'll be a little easier and the balance will be better. Mm -hmm. But if you keep your knees closer, you're challenging yourself a little more so the stretch right. gets deeper. But of course, having said that, one side may be more of a challenge than the other. Transfer your weight to the left leg. Place your left hand on your left hip, very gracefully. Hold on to your right ankle from behind. And then this time I'm gonna make a conscious effort to keep my knees close to each other. I'm gonna look at a point, I'm gonna look at the base of the tripod right yeah, that's there. that's true. When you have the knee close to... Right, it is, yeah. it's more of a stretch, right? Right. So we wanna get a double stretch. Inhale the left arm up, exhale, dip the torso, lift the right knee. In today's episode, even if the knees are out, it's okay. Very gently, exhale, sorry, inhale. If you fall out of a posture, don't give up on yourself. Get right back in. Just to redeem myself, I should try the other side when I'm done with today's taping. But remember, sometimes you we do come out of balance. It's okay. Forgive yourself. I know I always have to forgive myself. So forgive yourself if you make a mistake or you come out too soon. But just make sure you get your stretches. Another good knee bender. From Natraj, we're going to take you through a posture called Garudasan. Garuda is eagle. What you're going to do is you're going to collapse your whole body. So you're going to cross the right leg over the left knee, and then we're going to exhale and bend both the knees and go down. We're going to cross the left elbow over the right. So let's try the legs first. Transfer your weight to the left leg. Place your left hand on your left, left hip for now. I actually, no, you know what? Let's not place the hand. Let's use our hands to cross the legs over. So right leg needs to go over the left knee. So cross your right knee over the left. Once you've wrapped, try to wrap your right foot over your left ankle or calf. And if right you knee. can't? If you cannot, you just place it beside your left calf. Okay, you don't like have, you're, what you're doing is fine because okay. the idea is to get a bend in the knee. And what we're gonna do is to get the most out of this stretch, we're gonna bend both knees. Now let's bend the left knee as well. Right knee is up, inhale the left arm up. Exhale, dip the left elbow over the right, wrap your hands together, and hold. Inhale, let's come up, release the legs first, untangle the arms. Good thing you asked that because I could, I sometimes do remember to point it out, I didn't today, so I'm glad you asked. If you're not able to bend, what was the question you said? If you're not able to wrap your foot around your calf right. or your ankle, it's okay, as long as you're able to bend your knees, because the idea in today's episode is about bending and unbending. Transfer your weight to the right side. Take your left knee with your hands, use the props you already have, wrap your left foot around your right calf or ankle, left knee is up, inhale the right arm up, exhale, dip the right elbow over the left and wrap your palms, one over the other, Bend the right knee, get a little more out of your stretch. Inhale, let's come up. Release the legs first, and then untangle the arms, Garuda or Eagle. So when you wrap your arms like this, it's supposed to be the beak of the eagle. What, so what is the wrapping of the legs? <laughs> good, true, maybe the body, I'm not it's sure. It's a very good exercise, this one, I like it. Is it is good, and it yeah. also compacts your sphincter, so when you bring your legs together, you're actually compacting your whole equator, the midpoint, yeah. and it's good. It keeps you nice and right. uh, controlled, compact. Another wonderful knee bender, Darwin. It's called, Pars actually before Parsukona, Ashwa Sanchala, which will lead to Parsukona. Now the entry into this posture from the flowing sequence is a little different. When you're doing it in isolation, you enter it differently. Bring your right foot in front of your left. So keep place about two to three feet between your feet, two to three feet between your legs. Very gently exhale, bend both the knees, place the left knee on the floor. So you're basically coming down on one knee and then wiggle your right foot forward 
and then dip your hip. Ashwa Sanchala or equestrian. Ashwini is horse. Ashwa Sanchala, equestrian. Now, your pelvis is close to the floor, so you should feel a beautiful stretch. Now, yes, that one's got a very right. deep stretch. You should feel that stretch in your quads. The quad muscles are the front of your upper left thigh. Now, you don't want your right knee to go too far over. What you've got is just perfect. That's how far you want. You want to uncurl your toes. Very nice. And then we'll take this one step further. From Ashwa Santila, we'll take you through Parswa Kona Namaskara. Parswa is intense. Kona is Kona or um, prayer. I know, actually, uh, Namaskara is prayer. And Kona is Kona or twist. Inhale, the left arm up. Exhale, dip the left elbow over the right. Place the right palm on top of the left. Look up at the raised elbow. So here you also get a beautiful stretch in your obliques on the left side, plus you get your knee bended, bending in both legs actually, but more in the right knee. Inhale, let's come out of that. And let's switch legs back into Ashwa Sanchala. So let's come on our knees first. Gracefully bring the left foot forward. Take the right foot back, uncurl your toes on the right foot, and then dip your hip and feel that delicious stretch in your quad muscles on the upper right side of the thigh. And also here, right, Bana? You feel, it's more a strengthening, oh yes, when you go deep into it, you'll feel a bit of a stretch there, yeah. And mostly it's about bending the knee too. The deeper we go though, Darwin, I've noticed also for my body, you're right, I, I now I'm actually noticing, you've made me aware of it, I'm noticing there's a deeper stretch, but also yeah. I feel this really intense, really intense. stretch. Yeah. Left knee is up, inhale the right arm up, exhale, dip your right elbow over the left. Parsvakona Namaskara, place your left palm on top of your right and look up at the raised elbow and hold. Keep exhaling, inhale, let's come out of that. And while we're going to come into cat position on our hands and knees, I'd like to thank our director, Josie and her. Thank you so much for being there. Roberta Espinel for facilitating our facilitator for today for the lights and sounds. On behalf of Dao and Rena, this is Banu Suresh signing off, and you are watching Yoga Express. Thanks to Manhattan Neighborhood Network and to Rich. Now, we're in cat position, palms directly below the Shoulders, knees are directly below the hips. Keep your toes curled in. Cat or Marjaria. While we're still rolling, inhale, dip the torso, lift the chin, chest, and buttocks. Inhale and dip. Exhale, uncurl your toes, arch your back. It's a nice undulating motion of the spine. Let's try that again. Curl your toes in, inhale, and dip. Josiane, you love this, don't you? Uncurl your toes, arch your back. Josiane has cats, so she likes this posture. Let's bring our knees a little closer. Let's come up on our knees and take you through a posture called camel. Many of the yoga postures, and definitely in our sequence as well, are named after animals. So you have cat, you have rabbit, you have camel. Let's stand up on our knees. Again, this is a knee bender. Curl your toes in if you need to, because it's closer for your hands to reach the heels. But I'm gonna keep my feet flat and my toes will not be curled because there's too much pressure on the knees. Bring your knees about hip width apart. Place your palms on your buttocks. And then push your elbows back. Ustra asana, ustra or